everyone, and welcome back to Spectre Creative Channel. I'm Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. A couple quick announcements off the uh, top. Well, I guess I'm going to plug my book, Myth Wars, which is available on Amazon. If you like Greek mythology, I definitely recommend Buy it. Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book! And I'm also going to try to go for more images that I've shot myself, because Ethan Wilson over at figuresinquestion.com likes to put strikes against my videos and my thumbnails. So we're trying to avoid that. Okay, so what we're talking about in this episode are Marvel Legends and the inconsistency of accessories, right? Meaning some characters that you buy come with a ton of accessories. Usually if there's no Build-A-Figure piece, they come with even more to compensate you, or at least that's how it used to be. There's also the opposite end of the spectrum where we're getting figures with no Build-A-Figure piece and no accessories. So you could say this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, if you will. You know, could Tarantula have had alternate hands or, you know, something to hit Spider-Man over the head with or, heck, even some webbing to tie him up. Lots of things that he could have come with. All right, so to illustrate this point, I want to talk about the new Scarlet Spider figure that was just released with Marvel Legends, the one that's on the, uh, the retro carded wave from the 1990s, right, bringing back all the fun and nostalgia. Now, the reason I want to use this figure is it's a perfect example because we've had previous releases of this figure in different formats. We've had it released in a Build-A-Figure format in the box, and we've also previously had it released in a vintage card back on the, uh, the, the 90s Marvel card, if you will. And the thing is, all three of these had different accessories. The first version came with three different sets of hands, Thwip, Crawling, and Punch, plus two Build-A-Figure pieces, two different heads for the original version of Rhino. The second version came with two sets of hands, Thwip and Punch, but it also came with a second head of Ben Riley, the, you know, the blonde clone of Peter Parker there. And then the current release now, no extra heads, but back to three different hands, Thwip, Punch, and Wall Crawl, but no extra head, no Build-A-Figure piece, no Ben Riley. So what's up with this? It's, it's a little inconsistent. Well, I kind of want to deep dive from my experience working on toys. I was the brand manager for DCU Classics, and... Even though you can obviously upgrade to things like, you know, MFX, Shig Arts, those kind of things, we're sticking with Marvel Legends because of the price point. And looking at something like that Ben Riley head, why was that not included? They have the tool. Well, a lot of people say it comes down to whether toy companies are generous or greedy. And eh, kind of, sort of. Toy makers are an awesome bunch, and they try to put as much play value and as much into toys as possible. Believe me, I've had to fight many of them saying, we need less. Now, that's sort of like penning them in, or you know, who sets these boundaries for, for the toy makers because they just want to put everything in. Well, that's the shareholder. And we tend to look at shareholders sometimes in a negative way, but you have to realize they own the company, right? And everyone remembers, you know, the, the I guess the golden rule. You've heard of the golden rule, haven't you? Whoever has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> and yes, that's very true with how publicly traded companies work. The people who own the company set the prices, or rather set margin targets. So for example, the owners, the stockholders, could say a toy has to have a 50% margin, which means if it costs $20, to, or rather you're selling the toy to a distributor for $20, you need to make it for $10, right? That's the 50% margin. So basically $10 is the pen, or is the fencing, or the restrictions that the stockholders, the owners, put around a toy, any SKU, to say how much you can put in. And accessories tends to be one of the easiest ways to get a figure either over cost or under cost. It's all about balancing. And sometimes you can balance toys within a wave, meaning one figure in a wave can have more accessories. The classic textbook example is the Malvolgia figure from the 90s. This figure was way bigger than most Spawn figures, but the cost was done by releasing these clear figures with no deco and fewer accessories. They made up for the fact that Malvolgia was way over cost, so it was a balance. One figure sort of takes a hit, another one gets more paint or more accessories. Now, there are other factors besides just balancing out a wave and hitting those margin targets. A big one is, well, very much uh, what's going on with the economy. If you've seen your grocery bill, you know that bananas, eggs, and Pop-Tarts cost a lot more than they did a few years ago. 
This is absolutely true in the toy industry. So what you could buy for $10 five years ago is now costing toy companies $15. So the stockholders are like, yeah, you are cut off from putting way more into this toy because prices have gone up, but we still have to hit them, our margin targets of, you know, say 50% or whatever the stockholders set using 50% as an example. So visually, if you think of it as a glass of juice, if the top is, as, you know, that's your margin, you can't make it overflow by putting in extra accessories that are going to cause this. So the people who own the company are going to dictate how many accessories you get based on the margin target. So with that margin target, that's a, that creates a price ceiling for toy makers to hit and not go over. If they go over it, they have to cost reduce the toy in order to bring it down to that price margin level. I hope this explained how accessories are added in or taken out. It, it all has to do with the total cost of the figure in order to hit the, the margin cost. It's not greed or being generous. It's just about hitting a target price point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the book on Amazon and sharing this video. If you like it and have ideas for others, please let me know. I'm always welcome to suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.